What's up? I'm Troubleshoot and let's quickly talk running DeepSeek R1 on your own local hardware completely for free. As you probably know by now, DeepSeek R1 is a fantastic new model that was trained for a lot cheaper and it runs on much lesser hardware, faster, etc. It's a fantastic step forward for AI and LLM technology and just like other LLMs and AIs that I've covered before, you can download them and run them on your own PC completely offline, completely for free. Obviously, you can use DeepSeek in the online web portal at chat.deepseek.com but if you don't want to sign in here or just don't want to send any information overseas you can actually download the model and run it locally. In this quick video I'll be showing you how to set up and run DeepSeek R1 on your own hardware whether you only have a CPU and a bunch of RAM or a powerful gaming graphics card like an NVIDIA 3080, 4080 or even the AMD equivalents. As long as you have a healthy chunk of VRAM on your graphics card you can run the model really quickly. But anyway this video is for everyone, so let's begin. In order to run DeepSeek R1 on your system, you need to download a program that can load up this model and actually use it. Olama is essentially a program that allows you to load the model and either chat with it directly or connect to it using other programs. We'll get there in just a moment. For now, we'll need to actually download and install Olama. You'll find a link to this page down below. Simply choose Download, then select Windows, Mac, or Linux, and download for whatever OS it is. Simply open Open this roughly 800 meg file once it's done. So there we go, it popped up. I'll choose install, wait for it to unpack. And once it has, you'll see a pop-up on the bottom side of your screen saying Olama is running. On Mac, you'll see the Olama logo pop up in the top right on your, I think it's a status bar, but essentially you can pull up your start menu, expand the hidden icons here, and you should be able to see the Olama icon right over here. Right-clicking it allows you to quit it and view logs if anything goes wrong. Here's the logs here. And now that we've got Olama installed, we need to actually download the DeepSeek R1 model. So heading across to this other page linked down below, you'll find scrolling down the model download commands right over here. We have DeepSeek R1 1.5b, 7b, 8b, 14, 32, and 70. These are all distilled versions of the model, which essentially run on lower RAM and VRAM systems. Now, as long as your system has enough combined VRAM and RAM, you can run pretty much most models here. However, if you're looking for speed and you have a powerful graphics card, there's a couple of things to think about. If you have around, say, 8 to 12 gigs of VRAM, you should be able to use the 1.5B model completely out of VRAM and it should run really, really quickly. If you have a graphics card with up to 16 gigs of RAM, you should be able to run the 7B model and you'll need 20 something VRAM to run the 14B model. The more VRAM you have in your graphics card, the faster the model should run as the model will be loaded and split up, divided between your VRAM first and then your RAM as a backup if you run out of VRAM. It's all very confusing if this is your first time, but I have a 3080 Ti with only 12 gigs of VRAM. I can run the 1.5B model really quickly and happily, and I can probably run the 7B model almost as fast. However, anything above this is going to struggle to run on my system and it's going to be a lot slower. But for now, we'll start with the 1.5B model as that's the most lightweight model. If you're going to be running this one up here, you'll need a lot of RAM. So starting with 1.5B, I'll highlight this here, copy it, and all we need to do now is paste this into a terminal, command prompt, or PowerShell window. So I'll hit start and type in terminal, otherwise CMD or PowerShell, and I'll open this up. Then inside of this window, we'll just paste the command that we copied and hit enter. When we do so, it'll reach out and start downloading the actual model itself. The model size increases quite drastically the further you go down here. Regardless, once it's done downloading, it verifies and shortly after, we can actually chat with it. So I can say, hi, it'll think, how can I assist you today? Let's say, what is eight divided by two and inside of brackets, two plus two. I'll let it think for just a moment and once it's thought, at the very end, it'll tell us our final answer. The answer for me is boxed 16. No idea why boxed is around it. I guess that's part of its thinking, but is 16 correct? Well, eight divided by two, two plus two. First of all, the brackets, so four. This is actually multiplication. Then it's division, so four times four. And final answer is 16, which is the same that the Olama model got to over here. It's pretty cool that you can see the reasoning for each step that it took. And then at the very bottom, the final answer. It was just displayed a little bit weirdly here. That's fantastic. Also, how many R's are there in strawberry? It'll think about it, spell it out, and finally, 
After quite a bit of thinking, that's actually pretty surprising, we get three, which is correct. That's fantastic. Obviously though, this isn't the best place to use it. You can always close it to exit out of the model and open up your command prompt terminal PowerShell window once more and run the same command in order to very quickly spin up the same chatbot and chat with it immediately. But if you'd like a much prettier interface, all we need to do is make sure Olama is running, which for me, it still is. It's still down here in my start menu. And then we have a choice with quite a few different interfaces. One of my new favorites is web.chatboxai.app, where you can, in your browser, without downloading anything, connect to this local model and chat with it straight away. If you don't want to use the internet at all, download the UI by heading just to chatboxai.app and downloading it here. But there's thousands of different graphic user interfaces that you can use with Olama or even run the model out of completely. In the web interface, the first time you open it, you'll get a pop-up that looks like this. Simply choose use my own API key here, then make sure you choose Olama API. There's a couple of different things like LM Studio is a really nice alternate, but we're using this one here. We'll choose this, and now all we need to do is click this little tutorial over here, which shows you how to open Olama so we can use it with something like this. By default, it'll only run in that terminal window. Clicking this takes us to this quick help page, and it runs through Mac, Windows, and at the very bottom, Linux. All we need to do is set these two options somewhere. So for Windows, we'll need to exit Olama. So I'll pull up my start menu, expand my shortcuts, right click and exit Olama. Then we'll hit start and search for environment variables. So we'll hit start, search for it and open edit the system environment variables. Inside of this new window that pops up, we'll go to environment variables down here. Then at the very top, we'll click new over here. Variable name will be Olama host as seen here. So we'll copy this, paste it in, and the value will be four zeros with full stops between them. So pasting that in and okay, we've set the one option. New once more, followed by Olama origins as the name and just a star as the value. We'll hit okay, and now we're done here. Click okay, followed by okay here, and we're done. Now you just need to restart Olama by searching for it. So Olama. Once we run it, we may get a prompt like that asking for network access we'll choose yes, even though we're accessing it from our browser or a different app, we should now be able to connect to it and use it. Returning back to this web page, and you should now see from the drop down over here, model DeepSeek R1 1.5b or whatever you previously downloaded. To get more here, simply open up a new terminal and run one of these other commands here or one of the many supported Olama models, which you can find in the models library up here on the olama.com website for which there are many. If you don't see anything in the model drop down here, click cancel and then settings in the bottom left after refreshing, then choose Olama API once more more model and now you should see it over here. You can adjust how many messages are included in the context so it has better memory and the temperature or how creative it is over here. But for me, I'll leave this as default. Under display, you can customize how the app looks, chat, you can enable things like spell check, markdown, etc. change its icon and picture. And in the advanced tab, you can do some fancy things here with hotkeys, backing up of options and things like that. So we'll save and now in the just chat window or new chat over here, very similar to chat GPC's chat chat system where you can check previous chats, I can now type in the bottom down here. So hi, simply by doing that, Olama starts thinking over here, as you can see, and it responds over here. You can click the blue to hide or truncate all of the thinking and bring it back. Pretty cool. This of course uses the model on our system and you can double check this by simply just typing in something and checking your task manager where you should see the Olama server is using some memory and of course when it's actually thinking, assuming it's running off your graphics card, you'll see some VRAM usage here, etc. So we can give it the same problem. So let's do that. It'll solve it with similar thinking. It'll spit out a response and it seems like those funny characters I was getting was actually latex formatting or something similar, I assume. The answer is 16 and this looks infinitely better than it did in the terminal. Let's also try something like create a haiku about cheese. It'll think for a moment, think about how many syllables there are and punch out something that hopefully makes sense and follows those rules, which is mainly what this thinking is doing over here. Previously, different models can 
spit out text, but it's not going to really have thought behind it, which is a huge step forward with this particular model. And of course, the fact that it runs on your PC, that's great. So she's as tender, creamy flavors, hard to slice, but always special. Fantastic. And with that, simply just using this website here and the program installed on my system, we now have a fantastic chatbot just running here. Now, of course, you've seen 1.5b and just how fast it thinks and responds, but let's try something a little bit bigger. So let's head back here and let's install the same 7b model. I'll copy this command. Once again, just paste it in and run it. It'll download a much bigger model this time, so 4.7 gigs. We'll wait for this to finish and check back with the chatbox website. So there we go. It's done downloading. Let's send it a message. And this time you should see it responds, but it should be a little bit slower. It's still really quick, which is fantastic. So I'm pretty sure this loaded up happily into my VRAM. Checking task manager. Yeah, my VRAM is almost full. Not quite, but there you go. So that's great. This is happily running on 12 gigs of VRAM. I think the 8B model here would just be a little bit too much to run here. Heading back to the chat box website, let's head to settings. Then from the drop down here, you should now see 7B. Let's select that, save, and now we can continue in this chat or open up a new chat. Bam, there we go. So once again, same problem, and it'll think about it this time quite a bit slower, as you can see, but we should eventually get to the same answer. Let's try something a bit more confusing. Let's do that. It'll think about it for a bit, break it down to itself, and then after doing some, it'll come up with a more succinct answer that should be better put together than just spitting it out word for word. That's great. So all in all, let's try pushing it a little bit further. So instead of using almost our entire VRAM pool, as I have a ton of RAM installed in my system, as you can see here, we can load up a much more impressive model. It'll just run a bit slower for every step that we go here. So let's go for, say, the 32 billion parameter model, which should be quite a lot bigger and run a heck of a lot slower. So once again, pasting the command, downloading a huge model this time. So there we go, done downloading. This time though, you can see a bit of memory is used here and our VRAM should be pretty much completely filled up. That's what happens if you run out of dedicated VRAM on your graphics card. It'll spill over into your normal RAM, but this means that it will be working quite a bit slower, especially based on how far the ratio is from fast VRAM to slower normal RAM. So let's try the same strawberry question. And this time you should see it's a lot slower. So it's doing about two, three words a second, which is incredibly slow when compared to the 1.5 and 7B models, which could be completely loaded into VRAM on my system. Now, of course, if you have a crazy powerful graphics card and you can load all 24-ish gigs of the 32B model into your VRAM, then hey, it's gonna be pretty much just as fast as the smaller models. But for people with lesser PCs, we can only run so much unless you're happy with slower performance. So I'll give this some time to think about it and we should eventually come to a similar answer in the very end. Usually the bigger the model size is, the more information it's able to pull from and the better, more high quality answers you'll be getting. Of course, the most high quality answers will be in the full 671 billion parameter model, but that of course rivals ChatGPT in size and you'll need some really, really powerful and super expensive hardware in order to run it. But there we go, it's finished and we finally got three as an answer, which is, of course, correct. Once again, back on the website, settings, models, 32B, save, and now we can ask it questions here, such as, what is the longest English word? Let's let it think for a moment, and we should get a similar response in a similar amount of time. It's taken some time, it's still thinking, and there's a couple of words here, I guess. Most of this is obviously not exactly required. You could just Google it, but that's one of the shortcomings of AI in that it takes a huge amount of energy to come up with something very simple that you can get through more traditional methods like looking it up in a dictionary or just a simple Google search. But hey, this is the direction things are going. That's a whole lot of thinking, but we finally got the answer here or almost, but there you go. Anyways, that's pretty much it. You'll find links to this website, Olama, the model itself, as well as a download link down below and anything else that may be useful. For now, I'll be closing this, this, and from my start menu, quitting Olama, right click quit, and returning back to whatever else. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.